Well, it's almost Christmas again, and you know what that means. I get to take a look at a game that has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas. Oh, and I get to wear more ugly sweaters. So, I've got a bit of a confession to make. I don't really enjoy open world games. Now, don't get me wrong, I have played plenty of open world games that I do enjoy, but for some reason, a lot of them just don't hold my interest for very long. And you know what? I think I found out at least one of the reasons why. Most open world games go like this. Start mission, end mission, travel to new location to start new mission, rinse and repeat. Of course, the missions themselves are the meat and potatoes of most of these types of games, and most of the time, there's a decent amount of variety in said missions. But what about those moments in between? The times where you're not actively in a mission when you get a call from your buddy asking you to meet him in some random location in the middle of nowhere. A good portion of the time spent in open world games consists of getting from point A to point B. And this is where my issues begin. These moments are a barrier between you and your next objective, and most of the time, I find that getting from one place to another just kind of feels like a chore. Sometimes the actual modes of transportation used to get around aren't even very good in the first place. Let's take a game like GTA 4. Grand Theft Auto has always been about driving cars around. That's one of the main aspects of those games. But when the cars in the game control like they're on butter, it's just not that entertaining to roam around the city. At least, that's how I felt. Many times, developers also implement a fast travel system in their game, but to me, that just defeats the entire purpose of having an open world in the first place. This is where Sunset Overdrive comes in. Now, I could do a full review of the game and talk about everything from the weapons that include a teddy bear rocket launcher to the genuinely funny humor in the game, or the fantastically vibrant world, but I wanted to focus on the one aspect that truly makes the game one of the most enjoyable open world games I've played. The Traversal. Sunset Overdrive's traversal mechanics are basically what you would get if you combined Tony Hawk's Pro Skater with Jet Set Radio and added a bit of Mirror's Edge for good measure. And then infused that combination with some completely bonkers gunplay. In other words, it's really damn good. There are so many ways to get around the world of Sunset Overdrive, making the simple task of getting from one place to another a game in and of itself. Instead of walking through vast open plains, you can grind your way around rails that are scattered all over the city. Instead of driving a car through busy city streets, you can bounce off of deserted cars and various bounce paths to get around, and those are just the basics. You can also run along walls and even slide along water. The different parkour cell mechanics all make roaming Sunset City a joy. And I mean, you can just run from place to place if you want, but that wouldn't be the wisest thing to do. I bet you might be thinking that this all just sounds like a different way to go about the same thing. You're still going from one area to another area to accomplish a goal. Well, you'd be right, except for the fact that Sunset Overdrive actually implements a combo system into what would otherwise be a mundane task in other games. Sunset Overdrive actively encourages its players to constantly be on the move and to experiment. In fact, running along the streets is pretty much frowned upon in the game and can get you in some serious trouble. As long as you keep moving and jumping around the many, many grind rails and bounce pads throughout the city, your combo will keep increasing. This combo isn't just for show either. There's a meter that is constantly filling up as you keep a combo going, and there are character enhancements in the game called amps that can only be activated when hitting certain levels on this meter. These amps let you do anything from stunning enemies when you roll into them, to triggering an explosion each time you jump on a bouncy object. And did I mention, you can be doing all this while wearing a kangaroo codpiece, or, you know, maybe a wolf mask. It doesn't get much more fun than that. Sunset Overdrive's various mechanics aid in making the traversal in the game a much more engaging experience overall, but the traversal isn't the only reason that it's there. The combat in the game was also completely built around these mechanics as well. With a lot of open world games, your form of transportation is just a way to get around, but in Sunset Overdrive, it's an integral part of combat. I mentioned before that if you really want to, you can walk around the whole city. But if you do this, you'll almost certainly get mobbed by the overcharged drinkers in the game, which, by the way, are the weird zombie-looking enemies within Sunset City. And yeah, they turned into those things because they drank an energy drink. It's kinda wacky. 
But to avoid getting destroyed by the OD, you have to use all of the resources available to you, including all the grinding, bouncing, and wall running imaginable. It all just adds a layer of depth and fun to the normal third person shooting mechanics we usually see in games these days, especially if the crazy weapons weren't fun enough for you. Enemies can still get you while you're moving about on the high ground, so you'll still have to keep your guard up, but you're far safer grinding around than you would be on the ground. It may seem like you're trying to do too much at once initially, but soon enough, everything will feel like second nature. All this really comes together during night defense missions, where you have to combine all of the traversal mechanics as well as combat mechanics to fend off hordes of OD that are trying to take over your safe haven that's been set up at a brewery. It's almost sort of a tower defense mode, as you can set up traps and whatnot before the hordes are arrive. It gets super hectic and super fun. And this is really what I love about Sunset Overdrive that I think would benefit more open world games. Insomniac designed all the traversal mechanics first and built the game around them rather than having it possibly be just an afterthought. The fact that the rest of Sunset Overdrive is just as fun as well makes it that much better. I love the idea of open world games. I love playing some open world games. The idea of exploring a large open world fascinates me, but sometimes those fascinations are just bogged down by boring moments in between. With Sunset Overdrive, I never have those lulls and it's all due to its crazy traversal system. It's not something that makes sense in every open world game, but in Sunset Overdrive, it's constantly satisfying and constantly fun. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, you know, give it a like, do all that stuff, it really helps out. But if you didn't already know, this video was part of Boku no Eruption's advent calendar for 2014. A ton of us got together, we're doing a video every single day until Christmas, and it's already been amazing so far. If you want to check out yesterday's video, click on the link on the left, and if you want to check out the advent calendar playlist, click on the right link. Seriously, check all this stuff out, there's so many talented people with some awesome videos, and yeah, you should just go watch it. Like, seriously, do it now. Please? Okay, bye.